Welcome back to the Shrikecast. My name is Andrew Krauthammel, and today we are going to be learning how to do a basic port forward on a Sonicwell firewall. I've seen this question come up a lot of times on Experts Exchange and other websites, and um, a lot of questions when talking to other technicians. Uh, Sonicwell uses their own terminologies at times uh, for certain things. <clears throat> and people aren't used to it, and since a Sonicwell firewall is a true zone-based, object-based firewall, uh, it's it's more advanced and there's a little bit more involvement uh, than just going into your standard modem slash router that you may be used to and just typing in some port numbers. So, talking about um, a zone-based and object-based firewall, uh, Sonicwall as well as Cisco and some others, uh, they are object-based and zone-based. So what that means is, for, at least from what we're going to be doing today, the objects, everything in the firewall is an object. Uh, if it's a network object where you have an IP address of some sort or a DNS name or something like that, we've done that in the other videos, or you can have service objects uh, which are port numbers and protocol types. Uh, so every every port, every protocol, everything has to have an object created for it. And then you can create groups of those objects and do fun things with them. So what we have to do, let's say uh, if we want to port forward some random ports, uh, we have like four or five different ports for making, setting up some VoIP phones or something like that. We're going to have to create an object for each one of those and then create a group to encompass those objects we created and then go through and do the port forward. So we, ha we have a little prep work to do first if you're doing something that's um, that's custom. So when you go to firewall service objects you see here that we have some service groups and there's a bunch that are built in. Sonicle provides you with a bunch of groups and objects. There's hundreds of them. Uh, that usually you know takes care of most of the stuff that you have to do. So if you if you need to port forward something, there's a good chance there's a service object for it, unless you have a very custom application or like a VoIP phone or something like that, that you know has its own custom port ranges. So if we scroll down, we'll have our services. So each one of these services we have to create for whatever ports we want to forward. So we're going to go ahead and click Add for our services and you give it a name. So you can use spaces, dashes, underscores, whatever you might need. Uh, and I like to put the protocol I'm going to be using in the name. So let's say I'm doing TCP. Uh, and we're going to do port 8000. So I make it easy to find. Next we're going to choose the protocol type. I called it TCP, so for some reason I may need port 8000 TCP. And then we type in what those ports are. Uh, if you have a range of ports, say a vendor says you need to open up 8000 8010, well you can simply do that in the port range and have one object that does a range of ports for you. You don't have to make 10 objects for every single separate port. Uh, that said, it is limited. It's only a range, so don't go opening up port 2 to up to 50,000. You know, that's, that's a bad thing. You wouldn't want to do something like that. So, you know, use them, use them sparingly when you, you absolutely have to. So let's say I have to make one port. I'm going to go ahead, click Add. You'll notice that the Add Service pop-up window stays there, and in the back, the service objects refresh. So once uh, that says everything's done, you can go ahead and add another one. Keeps it really quick. You can keep adding service objects quite quickly, uh, and you don't waste a lot of time. So let's say I need to do some UDP. Same port number, but I'm doing UDP this time. I changed the name, changed the protocol type. We're going to add that in as well. So we're going to go through, add a few more. I'm going to make 8001. And then we're going to do 8002 to 8010, let's say. Okay, so now we've made some objects. Remember, these are service objects. They're not found under network address objects. These are specifically for ports. 
So now we have these objects uh, below. Uh, we're going to add a group to encompass all of those objects so that when we go and do the port forward, we can just select one group and be done with it. We don't have to run through the, uh, the port forward wizard five different times. So we're going to add a group. I'm going to call it whip stuff or whatever it might be. And we're going to go look for the service objects that I created. 99% of the time, they'll be at the bottom. So there's the ones I created. I'm going to add them to the right side, and that puts them in the group. Then if we scroll down on our service objects, you'll see there's our VoIP stuff group, and here's all of the ports that are within it. If you need to edit that, you can click the little edit this entry icon for the group, and then you can add and remove services as required. So now we have our group. We have our VoIP stuff group. This is one of the few times where I will, would now go ahead and use a wizard in the Sonic Wall. You know, when I mentioned did the VPN video, I said I don't like the wizard for that. It guesses on too many things. The wizard for creating a port forward is, is quite nice. I really like it. Uh, it does all the steps for you uh, for a simple standard port forward. If you have crazy NAT stuff going on uh, where you're changing ports from one to another, you, you have to go in and manually tweak it from there. But it, it does most of it for you. Uh, the nice thing about it is because in the Sonical Firewall, you have to create firewall rules, inbound, outbound, to allow the traffic. You have to create add, uh, NAT rules to translate the ports in the public and private IPs. And there's three NAT rules for every port forward that you do, or group of, of port forwards. Um, reason for that is inbound network to outbound, outbound network to inbound, and then you have a loopback as well. Uh, and then it will also create network address objects for you for the private public IPs uh, of whatever server you're trying to do a port forward for. So it takes care of a nice a lot of manual steps that would take a while. So what we're going to do now that we've created our group, we're going to go up to the wizards in the upper right of the interface. And I'm going to select public server wizard. So public server wizard is the port forward wizard, basically. Click next. And here we can choose server type. They have several very basic server types that you can choose from. And they simply coincide with the ports that you might use. So if you're going through real quick, I have a web server, I just want to port forward it in, it's here. Most of the time I find I am going down and choosing other because I have a ser specific series of ports that I want to open up. So when you select other, you can then choose from your services and your service groups. So what I'm going to do is scroll down and look for VoIP stuff. See how the other VoIPs are here? Those are my specific service objects. VoIP stuff is my service group that has all those objects within it. So I choose VoIP stuff, click next. Now I can give it a name, tell it what the private IP is for this server, and, and give it a comment if I wish. So let's call this VoIP, whoops, VoIP server. And on this guy, it's going to be, let's see, 2855.222. And a typo. There we go. And I'm just going to leave comment empty because it's fine. Click next. It'll have your public IP. Click next. Click apply. And there you go. Congratulations, you've created your port forward. So now if we go in and we look at our NAT rules, you'll have three new NAT rules for that. You'll have some uh, network objects for that. Uh, they'll, they'll have private public names within them. Uh, and we'll have some firewall rules created for that that are automatically generated. And in the future, we'll have some more advanced tutorials on how to go about doing port translations and things like that, or, or translating to different IPs while you're doing a port forward. Uh, but for now, that um, that's what I wanted to cover, just a basic how to use the wizard port forward, and uh, so thank you for viewing. Uh, check out my blog at andrewkrauthemmel.com. Uh, it'll be in the links and the information below. And shrike tools.com, which provides managed security services for 
small and medium businesses. Thank you very much.